Welcome to the Tour Coach Podcast. I'm Tony Ruggiero here, as I always am, your host. And you're joining in on what we are now having is the Tour Coach Minis. And those are little 10-minute conversations with myself or Jackson Court, who's going to be hosting some of this. These will be 10-minute conversations and musings from around the world of golf, from around our travels, our friends, our players, other coaches, to give you more Tour Coach, more Dew Sweeper content during the week. We've got some exciting stuff coming up for each and every one of you. If you like what you hear on the podcast, you can always find more content as we're kind of spreading our wings, if you will, with Dew Sweepers TV on YouTube. And uh, there's links to it in our description. Please support the Dew Sweepers and like our page there on YouTube. Uh, And to kick all of this off, we've got a great promotion running through Master Sunday. And if you go onto our YouTube page, and subscribe and on any of the videos in the comment section you just put hashtag do sweeper tv that's hashtag do sweeper tv or you take a screenshot of this podcast and on instagram you tag me at the do sweeper and hashtag do sweeper tv we're going to sign you up for a drawing on monday after the masters for a set of Shrixon irons zx four fives or sevens 12 gloves of your size and 12 dozen balls. We're going to do that drawing Monday after the Masters. You can check the links in the description part of this podcast or for a link to it, go to YouTube TV, type in Dew Sweeper TV and watch some of the videos, listen to it, put in hashtag Dew Sweeper TV or hashtag Pro Work or hashtag Tour Coach and you will register for the drawing the Monday after the Masters. That's a set of tricks on irons. 12 dozen gloves your size, 12 dozen tricks on golf balls, all to make you play better. And just like the Dew Sweepers radio show or the Tour Coach podcast, the Tour Coach minis are brought to you by our friends at Shrix on Golf, our friends at Bushnell, Buick, GMC, especially Mitch McConnell and McConnell Automotive. And you can't forget Vineyard Vines that keep us all looking good. So enjoy this episode of the Tour Coach Mini. And we're here with all the golf content you could ever want each and every week. I've got the legend, Donald Cooper, sitting in with us. Coop, thanks for joining me. My pleasure, Jackson. So your experience in the golf world is quite unparalleled. How long have you been caddy? Uh, To be precise, I started caddying uh, when I was 19. So I'm 59, yeah, long time, 40, 40 years caddying. <laughs> long time uh, and a bunch of incredible experiences and some of the best stories I've ever heard. And you're a good storyteller, so it makes them even better. Uh, that's, that's just, it sticks in my mind, so it's not hard to tell. That's right. But with with all of your experience and being around golf for so long, at a bunch of different levels, a bunch of different places, I'm curious what would you change about the game of golf and what would you change about tournament golf? Oh man, about the game of golf itself. There's just things I I don't even have to think about this. Hey, number one, if anybody hits it in the divot in a fairway, it is ground under repair. I just, I've always despised it, hitting it in a fairway and your balls in the divot and, Basically, then you go from, you know, hitting it close to hitting it on the green. Right. You get you get a good I, drive in an area in four days of a tournament where a hundred people are hitting it four days in a row, and you hit it where you're supposed to, and all of a sudden you're in a divot and you can't exactly play the I just, how you're supposed to. Right. And I've always felt like that is it is under repair. It's growing back. It starts growing back the next day. Why don't they do that? Why don't they change it? Uh, I don't know. I, you know, they. <laughs> It's. I think Nicholas was one that really, really it irritated him also, and still does probably. And that's why I, I. You go to Memorial when we used to go there. We'd get there on Monday or Tuesday, and you go and you practice around. And there's no divots, mm. and you're looking, but there are. They're just replaced, you know, with bigger patches of grass. But uh, yeah, it's always been a puzzler. But another thing is this: the the equipment. At some point in time, it's got to stop advancing really in terms of I, I think so yes just in distance and and everybody talks about distance but what i see is maneuverability there's 
the guy that can maneuver the golf ball can as well these days because it, I don't know. I don't I don't know why. Maybe not enough spin on the ball. The balls, whatever. Changed, the clubs have changed. Yeah, everything's changing, and it's a launch game now. You you know you hit from the bottom up on your drivers. That's the way you play the game now. Mm. And you know when I was growing up, we were taught to hit down. I mean, our driver at best got you know just level, flat with it. But we were never with thinking about hitting up on a golf ball. But I just. I, I think it, it's got to be it, like stop it now and don't advance it anymore, or go back or whatever. Are you in favor just, of the ball change? I, I am to a certain point. I think it's got to, you know, and I may not understand some of the things quite like I should about the ball. Sure. I just know that, yeah. I just you know, there's too many. I mean, I, I think there's too many. You know, I think tennis has about four different balls mm-hmm. brands and. You know, one company's got, you know, 15 different balls. <laughs> Is that exaggerating? Uh, no. I mean, I mean, like, Tideless has, what, probably eight mm-hmm. different golf balls, and that's a lot to choose from. I mean, I don't know enough about my – I just need a golf ball because I'm terrible. But somebody that's good, I think they ought to play the same balls in a sense. Do you think the pros should have it different from the AMs? Like, if the AMs have a couple different – golf balls you know like thinking of half of the population here at atlantic beach that need to get the ball up in the air and spin and hit something softer do you think amateurs should have a different variety compared to the pros or do you think they should absolutely i do i that's you that's you hit the nail on the head as to what the way i think i think the amateurs should play with a ball that makes the game to where they can play it in a you know four hours and yeah people you know people that are older in age and stuff like that I think they need some balls that would advance much, you know, that help them. But I don't think the pros need advanced balls at, like they're getting now. You know, I mean, it's just I, I don't know. If, and the drivers also, it's just bounding off these drivers and bouncing. And I mean, it keeps increasing how far they carry it. And it's like the only sport that keeps changing the rules and the equipment. And you know, baseball's three strikes. You know, four balls. Hundred yard dash is the hundred yard dash. It ain't the one ten. Now, you know, it's like golf keeps changing and no other sport's changing, really. Have there been good that, changes that you've seen? Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I think uh, some of the changes about, you know, if your club head hits a blade of grass and a hazard, you know, that would be a stroke. I think now it's changed to where, you know, the club can touch the ground and the hazard. And I, I've always thought that was a good change. Um Definitely some good stuff, but, you know, a lot of bad stuff, in my opinion, are just too much, too much stuff to know all the rules. I mean, now you take the flag, leave the flag in. What does that really help? I mean, what the, what did that help? Dropping from the knee now, you know, it used to be shoulder. Now it's the knee. And the problem with that, I think, this is my opinion only, is the way the rule was written. I don't think it was intended to have knee in it, the rule. I think what the rule was meant to say is every man should stand with their arms rested and relaxed down, and that's where they drop from. And somehow, it's, it, you know, I mean, the knee, that's awkward. You got to, no one can just drop from their knee. You got to kind of, <laughs> I just don't get it. Knee should not be in that new rule. And I think it's a great rule without the word knee. What about tournament golf? Anything you would change? Tournament golf? Yes. Uh, only one thing I can think of, tournament golf, and that's the pace of play problem. Mm. They find them, and they find them, and they find them, and, and obviously 10 grand's not fixing this problem. That's what they're charged, I think. Uh, I'm not sure about that, but, you know, they charge them after three warnings. The fourth one, they're charged a, a fine. And I think it should change to a stroke off their scorecard. And then if they get another one, it should be two strokes. And if a third time, which would be six, because of the three warnings, they should be suspended. Because, I mean... Monetarily, that would impact them more. Oh, absolutely. I think that's why it would stop slow play. I don't think uh, $10,000, it's a fact it's not stopping it. I mean... And it's get I, I 
I understand it sometimes. There's situations, you know, you get rulings, whatever. It's going to take a while, but it taking two, you know, five and a half hours to play. That's just too long. It's making us caddies carry sandwiches and snacks and drinks, and, <laughs> and I mean, it's like we're going camping. Yeah, it should be four hours. We should be Hilton Head. You should be able to play over there and walk in two and a half easy. But uh, that's the only thing I can think of is pace of play in tournament golf. And after after all the changes, tell me what you love about golf. I just love that it's play. Be, you play it outside, and you are responsible for only yourself. And it's just so relaxing, and I don't, I don't really, and I've loved it, you know, since I was born, I guess. You know, when I was a little toddler, I used to walk where these old men hit golf balls and find golf balls for them and stack them, and then one day I was like, man, it'd be cool to find a club walking down through there, and I'd be dang if I didn't find a three iron, and I just started whacking, and, you know, from there it went. But I just, I enjoy being outside. I can't not imagine working in an office and uh, I just think it's a game where you trust yourself you go do it and everybody in the field is playing against you trust you and you said you know you just meet people and have fun you learn a lot about yourself through the game as well don't you yeah because you have every opportunity to do a lot of things in golf but you can't you got to be straight up you're right about meeting some incredible people that's why I'm thankful for golf and Tony and getting connected with you and hearing all of your wisdom and experience. So, yeah, man, the people down at Old Palm. Oh. That's yeah, what fun stuff. Yeah, it's a great, great sport to work in. And you get paid for doing it, buddy. You're lucky. Yeah, let's- I'm going to wrap this up. But for those people listening, don't worry. We're going to bring Mr. Donald Cooper back for more. Yes, sir. You can bet any time, Jackson. I'm right here. want to remind everybody something that I forgot. Uh, Recently, a couple weeks ago, my wife and I went out. We went to a wedding and afterwards with some friends, we're like, hey, where's a great place to go? I'll be honest, like in my travels and day to day, sometimes I get caught up and I forget some of the great places right around the corner. But I got to remind you about the Ice Box Bar on 755 Monroe Street. I was blown away by just the whole vibe, the atmosphere, and with the velvet pig, the food in the back room, and the big screen TVs up front. We sat there and watched some playoff games. I was blown away by the atmosphere, the vibe, and just how cool it was to have the Icebox Bar right here near the Dew Sweepers downtown, near where I live. If you're looking for a great place to go sit, watch some games, hang out, play some pool, you got to go to the Icebox Bar right there on Monroe Street. There's a good chance you'll see all of us hanging out. But do yourself a favor. Go visit the Icebox. It's one of the best places out there. Hi, this is Tony Ruggiero. And look, recently, several teachers I know and several players have had some scares with skin cancer. In fact, I recently went and saw a dermatologist here in town, and I had a couple things frozen off. Eyelid, my face, my earlobe, and not getting any younger. And I know, I know it's getting to that time of the season where it's cooler, but look, Being in the sun is a real deal, and I've not been very good, to be totally honest, my whole career at using it at all because I didn't like how greasy it was, how hard it was to get off your hands, how it clogged up my pores. And then I found this sunscreen, Visor Skin Care. It's clear. It goes on. It doesn't dry you out. It isn't greasy. It's like you didn't put anything on. By far, it's the best sunscreen I've ever used. Without a doubt, it's the easiest to use. And we've got a discount code for all of you. All you have to do is go to visorskincare.com. Just use our code word, Dewsweeper. Visorskincare.com, code word, Dewsweeper. 